Well, relax and enjoy yourself. We've got a lot to get stuck into on this edition of the show. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, as always. Speaking of which, <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if he's listening or not. <laughs> I think he is, actually. Hello, mate. Yes, we've got one other person to bring in. Now, this guy, I think you'll know exactly exactly who he is. He's got the most famous a beard in geekdom and more action figures usually on his wall than the TARDIS has got Randall's. This time I've no idea where he is, but I'm just very oh, happy nice. to to, uh, to materialise to you into our company, Gary Beekler from Nerdrotic.com. Hello. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in Wisconsin, <laughs> so you you Brits might know much might not m know much about Wisconsin unless you watched Love Actually. It's it's pretty accurate. Uh, their depiction of Wisconsin. Okay. So, yeah, hi, go. everybody. What a day. Oh, I don't, I don't know, know what that, that is. is. Why, Why have we, we got, got Nicker? Nicker? <laughs> it's, it's the, the Time Lord Twindling. It is. <laughs> there shouldn't be an echo. <laughs> well, well, hang on. I can tell if it's me or not. Okay. Hello. Hello. It is you. Yeah, it is you. <laughs> what time of day is it there for you now? It's uh, 2 19 p.m. It's in the afternoon. It's a lovely afternoon here in Wisconsin. Did you uh, sleep well? I said great. <laughs> well, we may face that once like we get like stuck a, into this. Oh, of course. I was, got into yeah. this. I watched. I, we should have watched it on Friday Night Tights. We just didn't have time. So I watched uh, uh, what was sent to me. And uh, no, I don't see any of the Red Nose Days stuff. Red Nose mm -hmm. Day stuff. I, I have to like watch it on YouTube afterwards or find a way to uh, a very creative way to get on uh, iPlayer. Uh, if it's even on there. Uh, creative i like it creative. it is an iplayer it is yes i hey i have an iplayer account you you'll be pleased to know gary that um it's also there for a full 12 months so you can watch it over and over and over again mate. oh i can't wait to I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> we've got michael in the live chat Disney Plus, so <laughs> we've got michael in the live chat who says hello dan and sarah sarah wearing black for for the occasion, I, I am yes, it's, it's very apt. <laughs> We've got Matt Pop back as well here. Uh, That's how we all feel. Hi, Highland. No way, Gary's here. So obviously a fan of yours, there, Gary. Yeah. Turn up. If the chat's jumping this much, that's usually a sign, Sarah, that I ought to move on, isn't it? It is, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. So when we last saw the Doctor, <laughs> the Doctor was bursting into flames, which made a lot of us pretty damn happy at the time particularly when we saw the the next face that he was sporting was was this one david tennant as the 14th doctor we've spent the last 12 months sort of uh, clenching our fists and our buttocks waiting for some inkling of what this all new era would bring obviously with bad wolf productions disney plus sony and bbc studios all in the mix. Doctor Who and Children in Need have enjoyed this really long association through much of the last 40 years, and, oh. and some some of the dalliances in between the two <coughs> brands are more fondly remembered than others, it's fair, it's fair to say. Uh, but with the series now returning to regular production and in the hands of a showrunner who in the past has really cleverly and effectively brought us uh, dedicated mini episodes of our, of our favourite show, I think a lot of people had every reason to expect... Expect success. Expect something really nourishing, and and fun. Uh, the the recent confirmation there would be this mini episode, a mini soda, as we've gotten accustomed to calling them after after a gap of so many years. Sarah, it did send a smile across all of our faces here on Type Forty, didn't it? Because we, when we look back, we think of we think of time crashes, don't we? And Bridge Street Market next to Albert Square, or there was uh, mine probes and bus stops and death zones and all that kind of thing. So it's been a happy a happy association. Well, yeah, and obviously, you know, back in two thousand and five, we had, you know we were all excited. We, I remember tuning in to watch Children in Lead because we got that episode that became born again so we could see you know what what was the 10th doctor going to be like and it was mm. really amusing and exciting to think that here we are in 2023 um, back there back there again you know waiting to see you know what the 14th doctor is going to be like so yes it was very exciting i've not tuned in for children in need for a few years no, me neither and, uh, and and it felt lovely yeah, Friday the 17th of September, uh, 
Friday the 17th of November even, 24 hours ago, as of time of recording, saw the, the premiere of, of this as part of this year's Children in Need event. They hold this every single year, and I think it's actually getting shorter over the years, but we've got a whole five minutes worth of all new Doctor Who. It's the first Doctor Who that's been broadcast of any kind in over a year, John. Does it seem like 12 months to you? Um, it does feel like 12 months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish it had gone on a lot longer. Bit of a if I'm question, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 um, I've, I've just put myself in for therapy, to be honest. After that. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Of course, it's not just a year for us, like dedicated fans. I mean, the, the British public, they adore David Tennant. He's one of Britain's best loved and most prolific actors, isn't he, Charlotte? That's no exaggeration. And back in the noughties, this role made him a household name, isn't it? So a lot of people will have been attracted by these promo pictures, by the little trailers, and just the, the idea they could glimpse him in that role again. Well, yeah, because I think there was a real sort of like what like this sort of feeling of how is he going to play it this time yeah. sort of surrounding him coming back because we haven't had a full-on doctor return we've had tom baker as a lovely little cameo we've not had this a proper actor for a full series come back and yeah. i that was the main thing i was looking forward to just to see is this going to give us a bit of a hint towards how is he going to play it this time because i do hope and i still have the hope that he's not just going to do 10 again, because I think that'd be such a waste of Tennant's talent. We know he can play bad, good, everything in between. Now he's proved that in so many other projects. So that was my first thing. I was just like, yeah, this is our first almost look at 14. And I wanted to, and I hoped it was a good show in 414. I wouldn't describe David Tennant as an unpredictable actor necessarily. I think he chooses his, ro his roles very wisely, very carefully. I think I think he's got more range than some, but there are actors with a lot, lot more range. There are kind of Den David Tennant parts, but not really, because he'll play serial killers one week and, and dads are on the school run the next. What do you think perception is, Gary, of, of uh, David Tennant in the States? Because he's not as popular as Matt Smith, is he? Uh, it's pretty even. I mean, with me, he's more popular, uh, yeah. but I'd say it's pretty even here in the States, uh, because when it really reached its crescendo of popularity here, it yeah. was during Matt Smith's run and it was Netflix, Netflix carrying the newer new who completely was what really built up to the 50th anniversary and it taking over comic cons and nerddom and being, uh, being everything it wanted to be over here while still remaining British, right? Mm -hmm. So without selling out to America fully, I mean, I'm sure there's people who, who <laughs> will question that, but it didn't feel yeah. like that way to me. Anyway, uh, people like he's very popular here. He's, a, he's immensely popular uh, amongst nerds. I don't know if the general public is that aware of him outside. They might know him from Harry Potter uh, more. Uh, and but it, it's I don't know. I'm not a normie. So I, I it's hard for me to it's always hard to say effective. <laughs> Uh, but uh, him coming back was a no-brainer. Absolutely. We, uh, As and I talked about this after we watched that disastrous Timeless Children and then, you know, uh, at, the, at the end of uh, the Jody era, yeah. there were, you know, we you know, we just come off of No Way Home and we're like, listen, uh, we just came off of COVID. Everything's being reset. You need sure things. So, yeah, bring back David Tennant. I never thought for a million years they'd bring back Russell T. Davies or he'd come back because he said multiple times he would never come back. But now over over again. why he came back, and I don't think it's the best of reasons, which is really sad. Yeah, yeah I think really. I've, I've always held the hope and kept the faith that it was because of the storytelling possibilities that he talks about all the time. That He, he spoke just last week saying, no, you never stop having ideas for Doctor Who, Sarah. And despite the fact that ide ideologically, Russell T. Davis and I are, are, are getting increasingly further apart, I respected that... Uh, connection to the material, his work ethic and his loyalty uh, and understanding seemingly to viewers. You know, you met you met Russell T. Davis and you found him to be charming company and very warm towards you, didn't you? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a lovely man, uh, but but they are. I mean, Chris Chibnall's, by all accounts, a lovely guy, <laughs> even despite you know, um, whatever we may think of his uh, choice, creative choices. Uh, yeah, again, I, I was delighted he was back. 
a lot of people thought, you know, maybe it's a step backwards. But again, like as Gary was saying, it was this, we need the surefire success. He's proved he could do it once. Good faith that, you know, he could do it again. And he is a talented writer. Yes, we know what his politics are, but he's talented enough. I thought, to, you know, you know, he could do that a lot more cleverly and a lot more subtly than Chibnall did. So I was prepared to overlook that as long as it was good stories that he was going to be telling. And when he said in the concert he wanted Doctor in safe hands again, you know, I, I was all for that. Well, yes, I, I do think at this moment in time, Russell is the safe pair of hands we need. But that's what I thought, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we got this uh, this first bit of new writing from Russell T. Davies on, on Doctor Who proper in several years, Destination Scarrow by Russell T. Davies. And the blurb simply said, in this special Children in Need episode, the Doctor hurtles through space and time to a crucial point in the Daleks' history. And this is obviously ahead of those three specials, the three proper 60th anniversary specials that are coming up beginning from next week. It's a brand new exclusive scene starring David Tennant as the 14th Doctor, who uh, shares the, the screen with this mysterious new character, so it said in the blurb, played by actor and comedian Mawan Rizwan. Never heard so, of him. Yeah. yeah, he's got one of those faces. I recognise him from from other things, but I'm not really I'm not really sure what. And so when they when they tease something like this, the idea is with these telethon specials, these minisodes, traditionally, isn't it, Charlotte, that they sit there quite inoffensively within a whole evening's worth of programming, and so people might not stay and watch the entire show, or they they might sort of flip in and flip out of it, or sometimes people sit down as a family with their children. They may have been fundraising for the same good cause at school all week, but it is that kind of show where there should be something for everybody. That's the conceit of it, isn't it? So I was I was a little alarmed in the first instance when I realised that the Doctor was going to be visiting a crucial point in the history of his most important and oldest foes, that did send a bit of an alarm bell ringing with me. Yeah, well, when when I started to see the pictures come through, the first thing I saw, I thought was, God, that looks like Scarrow. Oh, oh no, we're going to Scarrow. Okay, because like you said, usually... These are really disconnected little skits. They're sort of very contained. They're, they're, they're a bit of fun, a bit of fluff, nothing else. So when I saw he was even touching, I didn't even know the Genesis link yet. I just was like, we're doing Carlards. That uniform's a Carlard. It's classic. I was the same as you. I was like, oh, this has to be done right. This has because to sometimes, be done sometimes Charlotte, they're better made than others as well, aren't they? We found yeah, out this was actually made back in April, so they've had six or seven months to polish this. You know what, haven't they? Yeah, and um, we all said at least it looked like actually this isn't just like a two-minute look. Doctor's in the set talking to the audience is actually going to be a written piece. It's actually going to be a bit of drama. Hopefully, we were all saying on Thursday, weren't we? And I just will get more into this when we. But my feeling is for the night and for what children in need is, I think he got completely the wrong topic and the wrong setting for what children yeah. in need is. It's fun. Yeah. It's harmless. It's like I said, it's, it's almost like pantomime. That's what it reminds me of, the sketches you tend to get here. And this well, the is the, there's a difference, really... though, isn't there? There's a difference because there's the two there's the two main fundraisers in Britain. There is Children in Need Night, which which is how would you describe the the causes? They're always obviously geared around children, aren't they, Sarah? But they they can revolve around anything from sort of setting yourself sporting challenges to uh, to reading as many books as you possibly can in a week. They do tend to all be geared around children, don't they? It's very family friendly. Whereas yeah. Comic Relief, the the conceit is that it's sort of it is literally all comedians and things like that. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a spoof, a pastiche. That's the main difference? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's overlaps, but generally, you know, Comic Relief goes on longer and it goes on past the watershed, so then you can get into the more, you know, adult humour and adult spoofs. But, yeah, children in need, very family-friendly, uh, especially, you know, for the little ones. Uh, and, the fact, you know, it, it ended at 10 o'clock, so I imagine, you know, a lot of 
families let the kids stay up if they'd been involved in fundraising. There was a lot they were allowed to stay up just for this event. But yeah, it's very yeah, it is harmless is just the word, you know, it, it's singing and dancing and silly stuff, puppets and that kind of thing. Um and this slap bang, super serious, very dark. It just, just did not fit at all. It was like a sore thumb. Well, Russell T. Davies, when he first talked about this a few days ago, he put out a little bit of a statement on Instagram. Russell uses Instagram quite a lot, Gary. I don't know if you follow him over there. And because people were asking him about about the the new 14th Doctor, and he was saying, oh, you may find that the new incarnation won't be exactly like the 10th. He'll be a little bit more human. But they were also asking him about the about the tone, about the tone of it. And this was his reply. He said, uh, the, the Doctor, Dalek, Scarrow, this Friday, uh, as part of Children in Need, starring David Tennant and Mawan Rizwan, it's not a comedy skit. It's a fully scored and FX five minute scene produced by X, Y, and Z. And apparently the music was by Murray Gold, but ri- written by, no, the music was by Ru- Ru- uh, Murray Gold, and that it was the arrival of the, uh, of the new Doctor. Uh, to me, though, this is absolutely a textbook example of what a skit is. I, I found it impossible to take this thing seriously. Just as, just as Sarah was saying, Sarah and Charlotte were saying, they've positioned it... S- really snugly it's a crucial part of the series broader mythology that's been in place for 50 years and kind of taken the piss out of it am i overreacting no no, no there, there's an earnestness from doctor who they like they even tried it in the jody era it, it didn't work but they tried nothing worked in the jody era mate. No, nothing worked but this was a joke and it made a joke out of the daleks it made a joke out of davros yeah. And uh, one of the greatest villains of all time. And, yeah. you know, the, the, the Daleks have been a hard nut to crack for even Moffat and RTD. I think they did a good job with them. But, uh, you know, like, I, I'm a big fan of Asylum of the Daleks. I don't know if you guys are. I'm a huge yeah, I love that one. Yeah, I like it. I think it made the Daleks kind of like creepy. And, you know, the, the fact that they took a young girl and cut her in the pieces and put her in a Dalek, that's the kind of stuff we need to hear from the Daleks. Not like, oh, silly Billy, we knocked off their claw and put in a plunger. Like, what the hell? And then we could have left that alone. That could have been like, I could have forgotten it, whatever. But that's now canon for Doctor Who, folks. That's Gary. He was Gary. going on about yeah. how um, people, you know, we shouldn't portray people in wheelchairs. I know that's what he's and stuff like that. We'll, and we'll come like, to we'll come to that later that, on. Yeah, <laughs> but the we'll come to that. Itself, but the, yeah, the special itself was a joke. The music was terrible. The directing was terrible. The, and if he said it wasn't a comedy, he's right because I didn't laugh at any of it. Although it was supposed <laughs> to be funny. It, yeah, it, mm-hmm. the intent was to be funny. But yeah, I, I, I laughed at the brilliant woman. Thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, we all laughed at that. You heard brilliant woman. Did you think of the brilliant woman that like completely uh dissed Graham when it came to his cancer? Because that's yeah, well, yeah. I, I, yeah. I thought it was about the great the the uh actually casting of a disability woman, so disabled well, woman. So for, think, a, you know, for a split second, Matt, when he said that for just for just a split second, I had no idea who he was talking about. I got completely blanked it from my memory. <laughs> it's, pretty much all, it's pretty much 12 months can do, isn't it? I, I also f- I found the timing of this really curious because, as you know, on Thursday is the colorized version of the Daleks. Uh, oh, you know, that's, it's a pivotal episode, you know, as Ian's been saying for about two weeks. Right. This is and, and Sarah, they handled, the they've handled the promotion of that. The, the the positioning of it, how they've aimed it with marketing. Electric Bull here says yeah. he knows how to market a show, meaning Russell T. Davis. The marketing of that has been bang on. They haven't yeah, put it on a mainstream channel in prime time. They've put it on the right channel, attracted the right people. And yet, just as Charlotte says, this is a really weird thing to fire at the children in need audience the week before this huge relaunch of a major brand. Yeah. I mean, and again, it's poking fun at the Daleks. And uh, yeah, but you want this to you you want people to tune in on Thursday on BBC Four to look at this colorized thing that you've taken super seriously and rightly so because the Daleks is phenomenal. It's iconic. So why would you bring it into the public consciousness that the Daleks are silly and 
have a plunger and oh the the names are an anagram ha oh, 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 oh. yes we know fans yes we know that but the, to actually see that in and to also have the doctor come up with it it was just absolutely ridiculous and and I here's was... the thing um, Gosh, i've said this he could have done this about anything he could have made up a monster just for this skit just he five have, minutes worth yes. of screen time, Charlotte. He, he could have just done anything. There was he had he had he had it, the whole like world go anywhere, from. anywhere in space and time, in the yeah. past, the present, or the future. Why here? But he he picked this. He purposely linked to G Genesis. He could have just done a random Dalek thing as well. He didn't have to be Genesis. Was the link? He didn't have to have Davros in it. It's a and he could have done anything, but he picked this. It's but a political back, thing. It's obvious it's a yeah. political thing. That's what they're doing. It's just this. Oh, I can't if you honest. go back to 2005 as well, when you got Dalek that came out, Dalek made it very, very serious, you know, where they yeah. actually did the scene where they said, oh, what are you are going to do? Sucker me to death with the plunger. Yes. And it started sucking the, sucking the guy's face off. So you've done that. And now just there's almost an arrogance to say, we're going to make a joke out of this now. Um, and... Oh well, he's literally giving him the plunger out of the the doctor's exactly. uh, uh, yeah. toilet, you know. Yeah, it's Russell. We've got a comment here from Electric Bull, John, who says Russell T Davies is a very good writer. If you even if you don't agree with his politics, you can still enjoy his shows. This is something that I said recently on a video. I, I still largely stand by that. I think he he does have a way of of building characters and telling stories in the most compelling in the most compelling of ways, and. Um, I'm not going to write him off based on these five minutes, but I think it displays a, an extraordinary lapse of judgment. I'd, I'd put it down to being thrown together in five minutes. But like I said, this was made six or seven months ago. It's And this is technically, this is the curtain going up on yeah. an entire new production. I don't know who who to blame other than Russell T other than Russell T Davies Atom Mirabalis says yeah it was a sketch but a high quality sketch I think they made Davros more of a kids villain than they originally made him in the show it came across like a skit with a Power yes. Rangers villain From and that's Sarah because Jane Adventures that's like because that. of the tone and I think it was obvious as well and th see if they'd have come out with it and said this if Russell on Instagram have, had said look this is a skit it's like dimensions in time. It's a little bit of fun for for the family on Comic Relief on Children in Need Night. We're going to have a little bit of fun, poke a little bit of fun. Don't take it se too seriously. I'd have probably been okay with it, but you could tell immediately as soon as those doors opened, the goofy music, the silly faces, even David Tennant, who can sometimes overact, we, he pushes it just enough. I thought David Tennant was terrible in this, and and this uh, and this gentleman as well, Mawan Rizwan, who I, I've not seen in anything. I know that he's a a poet and a sort of comedian, Sarah. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, they've cast this guy. It's a five minute episode; it might be okay. But even he was playing it goofy as well. It immediately reminded me. It reminded me of something right from the very start. The way that sort of sketch type feel. And I wonder if you'd ever seen this show, this kid show that's on the BBC. And it's been on for years and years and years now called Horrible Histories. Yes. They go back into, into real world history, don't they? And they yeah. various, it's the same set of actors always, always play these historical figures, but they play them with that kind of wry, sarcastic tone. Oh, I don't know. What are you doing here? I'm just doing my job. Sir Francis of Assisi. It's all, and that yes. was the tone of this thing. It was as if the Doctor Who history was real history, and they were ripping the living piss out of it, Ian. Uh, that's exactly oh, how it came off. First impressions are everything, even though, you know, I'm aware of children and need specials, and I didn't expect anything serious. But to no. go this route was like, it was dumbfounding, dude. I was like, wow. That is, it. but I mean, I know we're going to get to it, but we could have forgotten this. Just like we could have forgotten yeah. the Jody era, but there's a couple of things they did to make it impossible for us yes. to do so. And, yeah. th and that is sticking it to the fans. That is straight up like, screw you bigots. We're going to, we're going to make you hate this show even more. Uh, and, and it's not going to help, uh, you know, as well. especially over here, you know? Yeah. And I, and I'll just to say something positive, which I think is a shame, but he's a positive. 
they got Julian Bleach back and he actually yeah. did a really good performance yeah. in here. I love he him. Actually, He's yeah. great. He, He's I've, all, he, I've yeah. loved him since New Who when he was my first, my first Davros. And as soon as he started talking, because obviously he looks very different, I was like, oh, I know that voice. And then I, it clicked who it was. And I actually, at the end, felt sorry for him because I was like, no, you're actually performing well in this. You're actually giving, trying to give this a bit of credos, a bit of something, because that first like, bef like minute before Tennant's doctor arrived and he was talking and like, you could feel like this was Davros talking about his machine and he's happy and he's prideful and he's well, like so excited about it. There's a reason why they continually continually go back to Julian Ble uh, Bleach. He's a he's a very very well respected stage actor. This guy is never short never short of work. He does mostly work on the stage, and they've always viewed it as a bit of an honour that he'd be in Doctor Who. I think and you guys are being too nice. It was absolute shit, all of it. <laughs> you know what I mean, every bit. Of well, it no, I, and I did. I did I like Julian. I thought that Julian turned up and brought his best here, yeah, considering he was matter. considering he was considering he was given terrible material. Yeah. Uh, he played it at least a bit of a panto, isn't it? Exactly, the whole thing, it's the whole a panto version. Made. It's absolute rubbish, all of it. Right, seriously, taking the piss out of the Daleks, you know, destroying the, the, anyway, whatever. It's what I don't all get. Of it nonsense. It, even the performances were terrible. I found I found all three of them. Uh, the, all of them. It was just turn it into a joke. Well, what is that all about? Why is Russell T going down this road? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, well, I, I thought that I thought Julian Bleach was was. I thought Julian Bleach was struggling with it because I think he's really? he's got dramatic. Yeah, I thought I think he's got dramatic instincts, and you could see he could he was picking up obviously on the energy of the the way the other two were playing it. David Tennant was playing it as a spoof. The the other guy because he's oh, yeah. a comedian he was he was just playing it as a total and utter spoof. Is he a and comedian so, though? Is, is he a comedian or is he one of those self described comedians who's never done that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, yeah. it's now a lot of those, so. Gary, things have got that bad that it's got to the point where anybody the BBC describes as a comedian, I automatically uh, you know it's you been think on well, QI, have you got any, get some independent fact checkers <laughs> to go on that. Yeah. We've got a comment here from Dowie who says, "Normie here, I have." I've never watched a single episode, but when I first heard of Doctor Who, it was David Tennant. So I'd say he's pretty popular. The franchise reached me on a hail, a hail nerd rotting. <laughs> Gary, that Very one's good. for you. Uh, Paul Toastland agrees with you, Ian. It was crap. I'm not saying this was good, Gary, but I, I think it's important, just as Charlotte was saying, to be at least at least fair and see that Julian Bleach was at least trying to to gnash his he, dramatic chops with, okay, with this. I, he actually treated it like an actor. Yes. Well, that's his job. Whereas the sake. other two were, it was like, oh, a fun day at the office. Let's just get a couple of lines in and laugh at our, mm. ourselves. That's what it was. That's only, exactly how it felt, Charlotte. Yes. The actors can only perform with what they were given, right? And yeah, only, the material was only awful. perform when the director tells them to do, right? But that's beside the point. The whole thing was rubbish. The whole See, thing. See, the tone the was all wrong for me. I mean, after the time as children and after it pretty much being that close to being cancelled by the BBC oh. under the Chibnall era, you don't come back. I know it's children in need, but you're a few days out from a special. You don't come back and go, do you know what? We're going to do it in a, in a, in a comedic tone. You no. go serious. Um, and especially if you're going to set it on Scarrow, as Charlotte said earlier, you play it serious. You know. I have a question for the panel. Uh, yes, you do. You the, the earnestness of Doctor Who. Doctor Who is a bonker show, and that's it, but it works because it takes itself seriously, and it can do all kinds of crazy stuff in an earnest manner that we love, and that's why we've loved it for so long. But I have a question for you guys because we know that the anniversary of Doctor Who is the twenty third. Uh, how do you guys feel about them moving it to an American holiday? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's thanksgiving they, they moved it to thanksgiving so the thanksgiving weekend by the way but it's not the exact holiday but how do you feel about them moving it away from from what would have why not put it on a freaking thursday why not just have it on that day because, because they will they, because they need to maximize the audience the on the night audience in great britain and and people wouldn't 
people so Saturday, who didn't watch is it. Saturday season. still right, a big day because okay, yeah. So, yeah. so you guys still have like telethons and stuff, which is really adorable, yeah. and I like it. We we don't do that. We gave up on that a long time ago. We don't. It started with Jerry Lewis. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Uh, we, we other than sports, we don't have events where you know people sit around and watch live broadcast TV anymore. It's just done, right? So uh, it's it's cool that you guys still do that, and I admire you for that. And that's I I, I miss that a little bit over here in America. But is Saturday still a good day? Because it's the worst day for yeah. broadcast television. It always has been since day one. Is it still your best day? Is it yes, it is. Yeah. Well, well, the BBC, right? It is because um, the BBC obviously is, is um, being powered by our money, basically, and they have something like Strictly on, which gets. Yeah. Did they get how much did they get? Um, is it millions? It's what, a ridiculous it? amount. Yeah, yeah that, so, so they like, line them up. It's so the they most line them up. show go, in Britain. Yeah. They go Doctor Who, Strictly. Do you know what I mean? They line up all their popular mm. shows and and all the uh, all the old dears watch the shows on Saturday. So Saturday is very. It's a very big day for 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 the BBC. Um, so yeah, I'm glad they moved it to back to Saturday. I I am like, uh, I thought that was good, but, uh, it's, it's tragic what's happened. Um, I I was afraid this was going to happen to this, to this franchise. I I did. I had a little bit of hope, but it was like 3%. I would say three, maybe three and a half percent. Well, they put out a trailer about six, uh, about oh, six weeks ago, Gary, <laughs> two minutes worth of trailer. And that was, I mean, in my view, that was a breathtaking trailer. Increased production values, some yep. looks like some fantastic acting, and it, it showed us just enough. I think we've, and to be honest, I think we have still got plenty of reason to be optimistic about the three actual episodes. But nonetheless, when it After comes to marketing... So marketing is so, so important, and you can do a lot of damage in five you know, minutes. Marketing when is- for this has been shit. Sorry for the sixth anniversary. I think it's been total shit. Uh, think, compare it to the fiftieth. The fiftieth was freaking awesome. It Those was, even was. that little that teaser trailer that was just animated like it gave you goosebumps. It was freaking yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and ten, ten years ago, ten years ago though, Gary Doctor Who was massively popular. It was. You know, we are. We are. The trailer, and it's it was good, and I felt nothing. Yeah. I felt like nothing. And and the chat mentioned it. The worst, worst part about this children need special was Murray Gold. That I couldn't believe. When you yeah. just told me that was his music, I'm like, oh shit! I can't believe yeah, it. Either. It was not. It, yeah, uh, and you know, um, you know what I think of Murray Gold, and I was like, it's not your best work, Murray. Sarah, I no. thought it was. I thought it was stock music from the children in need. Maybe I thought, department. I, thought was- <laughs> I thought. I thought. I thought that they'd filmed it. Maybe they'd used Bad Wolf facilities to film it, and then they'd given it to another production team. It was. It was so tonally off. Richard Brooks says five minutes of desecration of Davros and the Daleks to start a new era. Talk about missing the mood of the room. Uh, oh, well, yeah. I mean, there are things in this that rankle me as a fan, Matt. And when I saw the uniforms, I this guy, I, I didn't know whether he was going to be any good or not. He was awful. So fair enough. But they got a voice cameo in for yeah. Peter Miles's Nida in the now, background. Was that AI? That? I don't know. Because if it t- was AI, I give up on the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. As an artist... I mean, I, I, I hate AI well, they, completely. Remember, they did it before. With They put Nick Courtney's Brigadier in a similar scene in Flux, didn't they? Yeah. And oh. it, they, did they? I didn't this. watch it. I, don't, I haven't seen the last yeah. five years. So. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was awful. Yeah, it was awful. Uh, but, yeah, I noticed that little touches like that. So there's that effort to anchor it in that mythology. But to be quite honest, John, that just winds me up even more. Oh, Why I mean, can't got- this character and that character and that character? I just, I just was watching that, and I think at the end of it, my family said to me, "Where are you going?" As I walked out the front door in my pajamas with a paper bag. <laughs> 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 I'll be back later. <laughs> I was out to dinner, and I stepped out to watch it on my phone. Like that was the first chance I had to watch it after Friday Night Tights, and I came back. Yeah. And I was like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "Just watch the first, first <laughs> Doctor Who thing from Russell T. Davies since it came yeah. back, and it was uh, it was terrible. It was terrible." I, I watched I, it with I my think... boys, and yeah. we kind of just and sat there in silence dinner. and just and just looked at each other like that. I, I think for the purposes of marketing, either. I think for the purposes of marketing, Sarah, <laughs> you think about your boys who were so excited by the Hooniverse fanfare thing a couple of weeks ago, they instantly lost that. them. Jeez. They've instantly lost them. 
So I think that actually this is a marketing disaster. Yes. I, I'm, I, I hope it raised money for children in need because this has probably cost Doctor Who quite a lot in, in Britain. I mean, th there are people in the live chat who like, who enjoyed it. And obviously all opinions are perfectly welcome, everybody. So, and there's somebody here who's, who's um, let me get to this comment, actually. You know, it's okay to be positive about things now and again. Uh, and who who, sure. who who really don't agree with what we're okay. saying at all, which which I understand That's that completely. Okay. Like that. We've yeah. always been, we've always tried to be balanced here. But I I thought this was bloody awful. And nobody's been more hopeful and more uh, and placed more faith in this new production than than me. Yeah, you got family. that right. <laughs> and me and yeah. well yeah I, I was i was optimistic and when i felt that i just kind of i liked to, i liked to see julian bleach i got that big hit of nostalgia yeah. and then when i processed what i'd seen i just felt deflated but the actual damage comes from what happened next which we'll get on to the content the content itself could have been harmless but it, it's the intent behind it I think you've also got to look at the fact when you look at the general viewer and the general viewer is what they're trying to entice back to the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. When they're watching children in need and they're watching that, they don't know if it's canon or not. They don't know if it's exactly. related to something. All they do is they're probably sitting down. They've not seen any advertisements for the new episodes coming. They're sitting there with the family watching children in need and they go, Oh, Dr. Who. And they watch that and they go, what complete rubbish that was. Why if, am I going to tune in in a few days? It confirms time? anybody it's who's never been anybody who's never been charmed by Doctor Who, or may or people say in their twenties who feel like they may have grown out of it. You know, it's that silly thing I liked when I was twelve. Will have had all of those things confirmed by that four and a half minutes worth of of TV. It's awful. Oh. It's, it's it's really funny because um you know my brother he watched it and he was like because he, he's a huge fan of Doctor and he was like ah. Oh. That was awful. And I'm like, yeah, it was awful. But think about it, right? Russell T wrote this. He literally went out of his way to write this. What does that say for the future of Doctor Who? That's all Not I'm saying. Looking good. I, it felt dated. Uh, I, I, you know, it did feel dated. Yeah. I, 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 I heard Russell bring up Marvel a lot. Yes. In this. Yeah. He's brought up the MCU. And, and you know, I, did, I, I didn't want to. The the universe thing, I hate the title of it. I'm not against like, hey, do a eighth doctor special. I'm not against that. Okay. I'm all yeah. for it. But uh it 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 really felt like, hey, we want to lean into to recent Marvel. We want to do the yeah. irreverent humor, silly Billy BS, and uh it, it, it that's exactly what it looks like they're going to, which it feels like it's so like that, that, that is that embarrassing mm. uncle or dad who's trying to be cool with the kids, but he's like a few yeah. years out of date. Like, Marvel yeah. used to be good. Yes, it did, Russell, yeah. but that was like five years ago. I think we can I think we can. I think we are we can very easily read too much in this into this as well. I think I think Russell is losing his edge, losing his eye for what the general public want, and for and for tone. I don't think he's aware that people have lost interest in in Marvel, or that Marvel the Marvel have lost their audience. I don't think he's aware or acceptance of that. I don't think that this the tone of this or the writing on this is necessarily any reflection on what those three specials we're going to get over the next three weeks are going to be. I hope not. I, think, I, don't, I don't. I don't. Th I don't. That'd be the case at all. Yeah. Say, I've I've watched practically everything the man's ever written. The the guy has never really put out anything bad until last night, and so I'm I'm thinking it, it's a more of a marketing disaster. He he's read the room completely wrong, and, and like you said, Ian and John, come mm -hmm. to think of it. The norm, the the norm is who don't know that this is tied to Genesis of the Daleks, they'll they'll just think that was just a bit of fluff, a bit of nonsense. So whilst they won't feel like any canon has been disrupted in the way that we do, and like it's this big affront to our fan gene, they they know people do know bad quality when they see it. People know slapdash slapdash production when they see it when something isn't when something just doesn't feel right. It felt phony and it felt like a skit and. I think well, I thought this was coming back properly, and I mean, so we've got a comment here from Electric Bull who says the idea that the Doctor gave them the plunger is pretty funny, since they never used it in the classic era. And I mean, for me, 
the punchline. This is how you know it's a joke. There was a punchline. In fact, there was there was two or three. And how, to be honest, a fan like David Tennant, how he could get on board with this. I, but I suppose Money. he'll just do anything well, that Russell. He'll just do anything that Russell Money. says. I mean, particularly yeah. if it's for charity. It just, it just devalues your classic enemy mm. in the yeah. history of the show. But that, that's what I'm saying. He literally he 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 wrote yeah. this with that yeah. in mind. And what does that say? Exactly. Yeah, and and also I can't help but think of t another time in things. Starry mentioned the colorization of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. We've just had the whole as much as we can of the classic era put on iPlayer. We've just had this massive sort of look at yeah. the classic era. Isn't it brilliant? Let's embrace it. Let's show it as much as we can. And you are literally taking the mick. Yeah, they're deconstructing like, you know, it. You can't have classic now be a pride of place on the iPlayer, have those episodes with Davros that we know and that we know his character. So even people who aren't fans might have watched some of that just because of they got interested because of the fanfare of those classic episodes going on the iPlayer. And well, now they see this. It, if, it, if, well, if it, it had, had been Charlotte, if it had just been the, if it had just been the Daleks, I, I may, just may, have hand waved it as a bit of silliness that can be ignored. But just as Aidan McGear says here, he didn't need to bring in Davros. He chose to do that. Could have ignored it entirely. And this, this is another, another wound that could have been cauterized, the <laughs> damage localized. Semi-visual okay. meta commentary for what is to come. Yep. We've seen a lot of franchises get destroyed, and uh, we haven't really seen... This is the first full effort to bring a fandom back. There, now, there was an yeah. anomaly of Star Trek Picard Season 3, and Terry Mattel, something RTD even mentioned and said he loved yep. and uh, was going to try to emulate, but popping a plunger on there might be telling us exactly what's to come. See, the important thing about getting the normies in is you still need your hardcore fan base. We are the shepherds. We shepherd the normies in. All right. We're the ones we're the ones when Game of Thrones was on who read the books. We always had a book guy who had to explain all the stuff that people were asking. Same yeah. with Doctor Who. <laughs> you know, what was that reference to? And we uh, go to the classic episode. You need you need the f one fan around to help shepherd in normies. You can't just completely diss your hardcore fan base and go, oh, we're going to just bypass yeah. them again and go after the normies. It's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. I, I said at the time, even if like there was no agenda and they just started making Doctor Who and they brought back everybody, you're still not going to get the, the, the amount of people you had before. That's just yeah. never going to happen. But that's what they want. And they're going to, you know, I've always thought these three specials were probably going to be pretty good. You know, and then we'll see with Shudi Gatwa. Uh, I'm, my hopes are not high, okay? They uh, just weren't. They were dashed immediately in their first interview. But I, I was like, at least, you know, uh, I, I think Disbrew echoed this too. It's like, hey, at least we're going to get, you know, at least I'll be able to watch these three episodes and kind of dip yeah. out, kind of like with Picard season three. It looks a lot like to me that we're going to get Kurtzman, the, the RTD Kurtzman era of Trek with Doctor Who. No, that, no. That's what it's looking yeah. like. And it's not good a, bunch of, a bunch of Wallace here says, to be fair, no one is scared of the Daleks. That's the whole point for me. I disagree. I think a lot of people yeah. are still scared of Daleks. Sarah, your, your own mother. My mum is. <laughs> she, she watched it in the 60s it. and was terrified. She did watch it last night. She messaged me and she said, well, that was crap. It's not so much what they look like. It's so much what they do. Like, it's like what, Dalek, it's what they instance. represent. Yeah, uh, well, but, but Dal Dalek actually um, created some, um, some, some form of, of, of evil about the Daleks and how they operate. So it was the, the first time we ever saw a Dalek truly menacing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's Great the episode. thing. It, yeah, it looks like a it looks like a, a a trash can basically. That's that's basically what what a what a what a Dalek looks like. Mm -hmm. Not terrifying physically, but what it could do is terrifying. And, and that's what Russell T. brought to us in Dalek, right? And yeah, yeah. anyway, whatever. Mm -hmm. Got a comment here from Matthew. Got a comment here from Matthew. Yeah, you know, sorry, Harry. It, no, it's indestructible with a singular focus. And that episode yeah. of Dalek, the Dalek is one of the best episodes ever of Doctor yeah, Who. Even then, and, yeah. And uh, it, this pissed all over it. Uh, their yeah, own work, yeah. you know? 
I, I, I can't believe it. It's, but even, I, it's even traded, didn't it, Gary, on some of the, the dynamic of that? You know, when Christopher Eccleston gets lost, locked in that room with the Daleks yeah. chained off, you kind of got to return to a, a similar feel to it, a confined space, and there's a Dalek. It's incapacitated, but it's definitely a Dalek. And as you say, it, it kind of affects that as well. Matthew Pounder says here that New Who is a compromise, and it all depends on how much you're willing to put up with, Matt. As somebody who has... You deliberately stepped away from you, Doctor Who, a few years ago, didn't you, for a combination of reasons. Matthew here's got a point, isn't he? It's how many things can we hand wave? How many things can we just think, oh, I'll just forget I saw that? Or, oh, it was just for children in need. Oh, it was just, just one thing. Oh, we can only do that so far. Even I can only do that so far. Well, timeless children's a deal breaker. And, 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 and RTD has done his best to just made the, make this, uh, you know, I'm going to cover it, but I just don't care. You don't get rid of time. Nobody ever expected them to get rid of the Jody era. I never expected that. No. I was like, you know, we can just forget it happened. I can skip yeah, it. Yeah. But of course they put in the timeless children. So you don't forget it. Yeah. Right. Well, that's kind of a deal breaker. And if, uh, you know, I know Shooty got what came out recently and said that they are going to depict the first doctor as the first doctor. Well, how does that work? So are you going to not erase the timeless children or is William Hartnell the first doctor? Because one cannot exist without the other. And, and yeah. so you you have to address that to the fandom. And, you know, I understand RTD doesn't want to disrespect his friend, but like the Doctor Who fandom should come above that. Come above up his to, up to, Well, Gary, the problem is that the mainstream audience must come above. I, I agree with you up to a point, but I think the mainstream audience simply must come above them. And, and that's that's the real reason why he's not gonna he's not gonna address it on screen. I think the I think the series has got has got more um, damaging fires to fight in the here and now, and to re to reestablish the show with the broader mainstream audience is far far more important. So I never expected that to happen. It's not that I, it's not that I wouldn't like it to happen. I just don't. I I completely see why yes. it's not a prior, priority. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the, the general public won't know about the timeless no, children. They don't. Ga so, Gary, so the, so the, few the people in Britain is not even going to get into this. That's the problem. It might with, be the UK. The, I can't speak for the UK, Gary, but here nobody's going to care. With the timeless children, so few people watched that episode, and and even fewer still, hardly any of them understood it. So to spend valuable screen tr screen time on doing something hardly anybody saw or understood would, in my view, be a bit of a folly, even even though it would please, obviously, myself. So you're you're trying people. to appease the people who had already lost interest, and you're thinking, well, we're just going to bring David Tennant back. But once he's gone, we're right back to pretty much the Jody era. A little well, snapshot could... of that. I, I, my, my niece, who David Tennant was her doctor when she was mm -hmm. little and she grew up, she watched it last night, and she messaged me and she said, that was a load of rubbish. I'm not not watching any of this. That's heartbreaking. Um, and 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 it, it is because you know, I was the uncle who got them into it all. I was the uncle who you know got them the toys and the figures, and they loved every element of it. But the last few years, they went away from it and they watched that, and they were like, "This doesn't and, track and, me." And to that, it at that's all. the thing that also I was thinking. About. Me and Star even spoke about this last night on Messenger with each other. The show is in this such a perilous state. It's in such a fragile state. It needs to be as pleasing. It needs to get the fans as back as much as possible. I think we've all said that to some degree on this stream so far. So what's Russell done? He's deliberately gone against canon. He's deliberately picked a, a character that's well-loved and well-known in classic era. He's gone out of his way to mention Jodie's Doctor. He's done so many things in five minutes, which he didn't need to do. Mm -hmm. He Very didn't scary. need to touch any of this stuff, but he has. And he's done it in such a brick in the face sort of way. And after watching that, I even I said, I now am nervous. And it felt, I couldn't describe it proper last night, but after watching it, I just felt let down. I know it sounds really stupid. It's a massive, it doesn't no, sound stupid. stupid. I felt the same. I felt massively deflated. I've, I'm a big fan of Russell T. Davies' work. And, and his work is what I don't have to like a person. I certainly don't have to agree with their ideology to enjoy their work. And so to, and so to get this sort of this example of, of what we could be getting, as I say, I look at this mark in terms of marketing. 
a, a kind of a market. Yes, it is for charity, but it's also marketing for Doctor Who. And I can't believe they'd get it so, so wrong. It's so inappropriate. So for people like me, who I'm looking for reassurances that the that sins of the recent past are going to be made up for and lessons have been learnt, all I see here is a series that, for example, if I was if I was your niece there, John, who'd grown up watching the show, or older older fans too, I, I would imagine would watch this and see it riffing off of Genesis and the Daleks and think, well, here's a show that if it's not either A, trading off its own mythos or selling it completely out, or just sniffing its own farts, it's got it's got no reason to exist anymore. Yeah. It looks no. like a show that's a spent force. And I know it's not a spent force because there's all these fantastic storytellers that want to work on it that can't get in. The trouble you've got now is, and I've said this before, you've got a click in the production team and their their friends that yeah. for years it's just been passed around yeah. like a present to each one of them. You need fresh people to come in, fresh minds and ideas, and that's not happening. It's They've gone back that agree everyone's saying that they played it safe they had to with the Jodie Whittaker situation and Chibnall era they had to do that but you would think they'd have a long-term strategy to think well hang on a minute this has run its course now we need to go in a new direction let's try and bring some fresh people in but all I keep seeing at the moment is and this this is how I know that it's now connected with Disney is the fact that they've just brought two people over from Loki Oh, I'm God. not yeah. Loki at all. Yeah, and I think it's the director yeah. and one of the writers. Uh, the director who left. Was, yeah. Yes, she left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God. And, I, and I, I, the thing is that I was yeah. telling everybody it was going to go down this road. Yeah. And um, obviously, me and Simon were of, of that thought. Um, but you guys had, you guys were positive about what was going to go forward. But now, everything that um, Charlotte said just now, it really does. It's, it's it's like a brick in the face now. Do you know what I mean? And the and same thing with what what Darry is saying as well. What, now now what? That's the question. Now what's going to happen? Well, my the thing is though, Ian, it, is that yeah, this this was unreservedly, absolutely awful. There is there is no way anybody. I've seen people who've been standing up for Chris Chibnall stuff over the last five years over on X saying, no, I'm not going to stand by this. This <laughs> this was terrible. Mm. That but and mostly because. It's also badly judged. I don't think that this will be the tone of the three specials. I don't think that Tennant's acting will be so so off kilter. I do think Russell will have, will be telling half decent stories, and I, I I think we can see by the by the trailers and everything else the production values are considerably higher. Well, they're always, they're always always going to be though, weren't they, Dan? You know. So what I'm what I'm saying though, Ian, is just because this was shit, it doesn't mean that the next three hours will be shit. Yeah, but we <laughs> before all this happened, we were saying right, it's going down the wrong road, and you were saying the same thing. It does yes, look I was. Like this, I think it's just right? doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It doesn't mean I'm wrong about everything. No, no, I know, yeah. I know, mate, but. But it, it's like the light right in Just because wall, just it? because this Minnesota wasn't was was awful, it doesn't mean that, I hope, that we've got to give up completely. I hope, but my my that, hopes that being reactionary dashed. and silly. Yeah, but no, I'm not. I'm just saying, I'm, my 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 hopes are being dashed now because of because of that. Uh, yeah, I can understand thing. it. I'm de I'm really That's deflated ridiculous. by it as well. I I must admit because I feel mm. that all that all that goodwill because it was out there. I, I won't say there was a huge appetite for Doctor Who the way that there was. 10 years ago, Gary, at the 50th, and certainly 18 years ago when David Tennant was at the top of his game, but people were asking me about this show again. Oh, when is it back again? And making a note of it. They wanted to be there because people want to watch this show, but I believe they've just given several, I think they've just given several million, pe million people reason not to watch next Saturday, which mm. they will arguably be bigger, be, be uh, bringing, sorry, bigger guns than that. Uh, yeah. I think we are in a much different space, even when Jody uh, re became uh, the first female doctor, played by Jody Whitaker. Uh, <laughs> and I think that Russell T. Davies has told us over and over again what he intends to do with the show, and I believe him. And I I'm not encouraged by it at all, like at all. I was very wait and see, with a very skeptical eye. But I'm like, all right, David Tennant, RTD, sure, I'll I'll, mm -hmm. I'll watch it. Uh, but I'm not excited about it, and it it, it would be a very hard hill to climb to get this back up to where it was before because this can't just be a big show in the UK now, guys. This has to be a worldwide sensation 
a worldwide yeah. streaming sensation. So it's kind of the UK's worst nightmare. It needs to appeal to everyone and not the Brit, which I hate, by the way. I would never want an American working on Doctor Who. My kids were into this show and they dipped mm -hmm. after Joni and they're not coming back. And nobody their age here is coming back or gives a crap. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be a kid show. So if it appeals to anybody over here, it's going to be a bunch of 50 year olds, which is not what they want. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're they're in for some big trouble. And I think, uh, I, yeah, I think RTD came off defiant in this this little special. He came off very defiant. And I think that tells us a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, if we thought we were going to get an ideology free Doctor Who that was just going to tell Doctor never Who stories, never going to happen. Mm -hmm. It was no, I, I, even I never thought that that was a possibility because there was yeah. there was ideology up to a point in the, in his original run, but it was because it was offset well, point, with. But it's going to go way past that point now, and it's going to alienate people almost immediately if it hasn't already. Yeah, with they, little children in need special, which his was, behavior towards the fans, especially in the last twenty four hours, has been very well, disappointing. Well, before I go, let's get to that yeah. quote. I mean, which absolutely pissed everybody off. Uh, is, well, well, it depends on which one you mean. Sadly, we've got a, we've got a choice. I've got <laughs> I've got a couple here. Uh, he was so he's quite active on Instagram, Russell T Davis, and he does engage with people. And largely, it's it's quite it's quite nice and cozy stuff. Uh, but now and again, somebody asks him a question, which it's as if he can't believe they've got the audacity to ask it, ask it of him. Mm -hmm. And we get we get responses where, well, sometimes they're just plain nasty, and the glo the gloves come right off. Other times, like this, they're they're quite dismissive. People are obviously uh, very um, upset about the the change to uh, Davros in particular. Now, I I thought that obviously this character was originally appeared in 1975, played by Michael Wisher. Everybody uh -huh. loves Michael Wisher's take on the character. Mm -hmm. Then David Goodison, Terry Malloy, fabulous actors played Davros in the classic era. And, da and Davros, on his own merits, is is an iconic, legendary character in, in popular fiction. He's, he, Michael Wisher's confrontation with Tom Baker's fourth Doctor is seen as one of the seminal moments in Doctor Who in an outstanding story. And and so to alter this this dynamic, this relationship, and that figure in any way, is um, something that I think that any writer, any creative is going to do at their at their peril. Never mind the extent that Russell has with this. But somebody brought him brought him a a, a query just yesterday. Just a query uh, says uh, Davros isn't a wheelchair user. He's a partially mutated Khalid in a life support system halfway between Khalid and Dalek. Uh -huh. uh, I, I was perfectly fine seeing Davros pre-accident, which is what I thought this was. Same in here. which case, yes, uh, in which case, I, I yeah, Ian, I think it was a, pr I think it was all terrible. But at least Julian Bleach was there. At least the costumes were okay. But he says, I think a lot of fans have wanted to see this for some time. But to insist it's there for better representation for disabled people is utterly bizarre. And he explains himself, if you're now going to pretend that Davros was never in the chair or that he just got better. It undermines one of the greatest villains who ever created. Now, Rob Gardner, who's sent that to him on Instagram there, I think that's respectfully put mm -hmm. to Russell yeah. on a public platform. Russell doesn't have to have this public platform on Instagram. It's his mm -hmm. choice. He's been respectful. He hasn't swore. He hasn't accused him of anything at all. He's expressed his view. Mm -hmm. and, and which one word answer did Russell T. Davis come back with, Sarah? Tough. Well, this yeah. is it. It's... It's the arrogance, it's the self righteousness, and and just yeah, the the agenda. The tone. See, I, I think this isn't even a gender, Ian. This is somebody who no. just thinks he's better than you. Yeah. No, 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 I not. Think, look, no, 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 Dan. Look, um, I think Russell T Davies doesn't realise he's the custodian of Doctor Who. He doesn't own Doctor Who. He just thinks he's the bloody got all of it because he brought it back in two thousand and five. And since then, his ego has grown more and more and more. And probably over that time, since he hasn't been on the show, people are going, when are you coming back to Doctor Who? When are you coming? And he's grown his frigging ego bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just gotten to the point now where he thinks, I can do no wrong. Yep. Totally. Well, that response to the fandom is is absolutely it, it, that that tells us everything we need to know. Uh, I have the same answer yeah. for when the Hooniverse goes down the same road as the Dark Universe. Tough, Russell. <laughs>
Yeah, tough. Please. Yeah. Uh, that's not how you talk to fans, especially, you know, th- that kind of respectful conversation gets conflated with, uh, sure, there's trolls and there's a-holes everywhere. That's life. Uh, but mm-hmm. most of the fans respond like that. That And that's proper. That's respectful. It's just yeah. like, hey, why are you doing this? You know, we we, we, we want to love your stuff. We want to give you money. Why are you doing this? And you get a tough, okay, well, see ya. Bye. Well, he did, he did similar in the week, didn't he, where he said basically about um, – the, the person that's playing Rose, and he said, "Well, anyone body who can't accept that is just a sad individual." Um, yeah, who's got an empty team. life or something like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. My view, and I would flip that. I would say, no, it speaks to your insecurity. Yeah. Every show, every movie, every press release you do, every radio show you do, you have to put in there about your representation and your ideology. I think John, he's become completely. He's he intellectually compromised and ideologi- ideologically captured by yeah. by this I, virus I, I think, that has wiped people. Sorry, Matt. No, you're right. Um, I, I just think that maybe he was looking at the Chibnall era and going, I can do this better. I can explain it a lot better than what they're trying to do. It's just too ham-fisted in the face. I can do, I can explain all these sort of things, all these agendas and everything in a better way. And of course he can't. We can all see through it. Yep. And, I, and I think it's so telling more than because I watched him in the Unleashed, the interview he gave, the two minutes. Yeah, I've got a and clip for of me, that up as well. It was so telling that your priorities are no longer storytelling, Russell, yep. from what you said in that interview to me. Your priorities are not that. The fact that you can, because all you see in Dad Frost isn't a character isn't a villain, isn't a completely complex, brilliantly written individual. No, he's part of a group. He's a wheelchair user. He's a disabled character. Well, it's like me. That I've is got, pathetic. Got, He's more I've, than that. Yeah, and Darth an Vader's an asthmatic, and exactly. Freddy Krueger's uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Freddy Krueger's a burn victim. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my I God, would love to know. I would He's love to know. And clowns. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd love to know what came first in this. The, when when they said you know, we'd like to do something for children in need, you've got five minutes. Was it like, oh, I could take the doctor back to this place and time for a few minutes? And it'll be bit of harmless fun that would have been wrong as it turned out did that come first or was it i've got four minutes here i can write some sort of ideological wrong that i see in the I, we don't know which of those came first neither answer is a, a good outcome in has produced a good outcome in my view but it, i think if we knew which came first then obviously that would be an indicator yeah. particularly like I, say, I think these three specials are going to be fine i can't help but be a little worried about the upcoming series with, yeah. with uh, Shooter Gat, weren't it, though, where he's got a longer what, period of what time. What sticks in my throat with that interview, as Charlotte said, is who does he think he is? And what gave him the... Why does he think he's got to rally for disabled people anyway? Has anybody ever been offended by Davros? Or, as some brilliant person pointed out earlier today, what about Lumic Russell? That you wrote. What about uh, Max in uh, Voyage of the Damned? What about Cassandra? Loads of disabled characters. It's not you can't just say only able-bodied people. He doesn't even stand by. That's ridiculous. He doesn't even stand by what he says though, because two years ago he was spouting on that only gay people could play gay characters. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are, two years later, and he's got a man playing a woman. Nobody, nobody asked him to take up this mantle. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I bet, and again, no, it, but he's taken it upon himself to do that, though. And the fact yeah. that he says he has the goal to say, I say this is how Davros says, Well, no, sorry, sorry, Russell, no, you and don't. And it goes back say. to being the custodian, he doesn't own yeah. Doctor Who, he needs to realize there are rules to Doctor Who, there are rules, realized. he can't I've... just break them willy nilly. Matt, I've got comment here from Digby Strawbridge on screen who says it bore all the uh, horrible example of Disney Marvel trivialising their material. And I've just realised yeah. what this scene with the plunger reminded me of. That plunger, which I, I now just see as a plunger, after 50 mm-hmm. years of being terrified by this thing, <laughs> I was terrified with a small T, I now see that as a plunger. The, the way that he has robbed that of its power 
the Daleks' sucker arm is exactly how that original season of Loki, which I did watch, yep. had had Infinity Stones rolling around in some drawer somewhere. Yep. It's the same. It, it is. I hate to say it. It's it's the same move. And Absolutely. It's worrying. It's, and it's, it's done really deliberately worrying. as well. It's done deliberately. So yes. that just goes mm. to show where where powers. we're going with Doctor Who. I mean, these three might be okay and might have a little bit of um, women telling off the men in it, probably. But you know, hopefully it'll be nice and hopefully we'll enjoy it. But the shooty one, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think we're going to go back to square one with that one. So, well, if you remember, Ian, when we saw a few, we, we saw some pictures a few weeks ago of shooty okay, Gatwick filming, right. at right. filming the new show, and he was uh, stood there in the middle of a town centre somewhere wearing a kilt and a what skirt. looked like and what that was a it was a kilt. It was mate. a skirt. <laughs> It was, a skirt. It, it was a skirt. It was a kilt, Ian. No, it was a skirt. Then maybe walk outside with right, my pajamas no. on again. <laughs> it was a kilt. If was somebody's a skirt. wearing, if somebody's in the middle of a town centre at three in the morning wearing a kilt and a woman's blouse, uh, I, the, my objection to that was that it, it's the kind of zaniness that I cannot abide in this character. That the Doctor is this ridiculously uh, eccentric, hyper eccentric character, which and and I'm not saying they did they. Yeah, every time they did it in the classic show, it was a disaster. It's still a disaster now. But that kind of zaniness just tunes me out of the show completely. And I, I picked up on that. Even though even though Tennant was dressed normally, even though the lighting was low, the, the actual combination of the other production elements spoke of zaniness, spoke of, of a skit and a spoof. Uh, and again, this is exactly what I... Not only w which doesn't appeal to me personally... But the last thing that I think Doctor Who, sh Who should be doing at this point in its in its history, Charlotte, I, I, I think it's completely wrong. It's, uh, yeah, I just we've we've all said that Doctor Who, yes can be a bit eccentric, can be a bit like you said out there and weird, and we've said that. But at the heart of it, it actually has can tell some brilliant, serious when it needs two stories. And that's what we need to see. We need to, because Jody Zero dipped into that, this sort of ridiculousness, this farcical nature. Mm -hmm. And Russell needs, the first impression he needs to present for Doctor Who going forward is, no, Doctor Who can tell some actually complex, really good stories. And you shouldn't be, you shouldn't just think it's a daft kids show. Because that, Russell's also said in an interview, that he doesn't, that it's not a kid's show. Can so I, it's like, which are you having, Russell? Well, he, he's right in the sense that it's it's not a children's show, it's a family show, which is inclusive of children, which is, but that's again, that's another quote. That quote has been taken a little bit out of context, but it's also a really stupid thing to say publicly when you're right at this precise point in the in the series coming back. Uh, Robert Payne uh, talking about the guy who plays, uh, again, We've got. We watched a sketch with a character called. The character was called Caster Villain. How are we supposed to take that? Seriously? Yeah, I know it's that. Yeah, it was and so if Russell was to say, if Russell was to say, this is a skit, this is a spoof, I'd still hate the fucking thing, but yeah. I wouldn't feel like I wouldn't feel like it's yet another piece of my childhood that's just been desecrated. Head to him. The live chat says I didn't realise people took the plunge on the Daleks seriously before this special because that's the only part of the Daleks they ever made fun of. I, I think it's it's the, a combination of things. It's the silhouette of the Dalek, the Daleks, I think, that makes it work. I think you, you take away one constituent part, and it probably all looks ridiculous, Gary, if you were to toss these things down, <laughs> down on a work counter somewhere. I don't know. Thank you for all the comments, everybody. There's some, there's some real, uh, yeah, people just venting their spleen. It's completely understandable. Um, as, uh, as bad as the skit was, says Gary Akers, the retro doc, I was more traumatised by the comedian playing Jodie Whittaker in the intro. Yeah, that's another one of the BBC's favourite comedians. Mel Guidenroik, was that her name? I always forget her name. And she was there with Jason Manford doing the thing these types always do. Oh, they did the geez. thing. Oh, you know. her. Isn't right. it all silly? Isn't it? You know, I've not got any time for either of these. Yeah. But you expect perhaps She's actually like, got I mean, boobs, whereas Jodie does. <laughs> you, expect, you expect people like this masquerading as, as entertainers to be on something like Children in Need. It's, it's fine. It's your price of entry in many <laughs> In many respects, uh, Kelly reminds us they did, they do, they did know how to make good skits. Time Crash was freaking brilliant. It was respectful. Yeah, it was. 
It was funny. It was bittersweet. It had everything. And Gary, I, th- I thought right. that's what we were going to get. I was salivating. I thought we were going to get a slice of slither of that. And we got, a, instead of a link of a, a particular nasty kind of unflushable turd that's been around for 24 hours. And I think we're going to be talking about it for quite a while afterwards. Oh, yeah. I thought we would get like a little preview of the next special. I thought yeah, it was going to lead into that, you know, mm-hmm. simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we did not get that. And it's pretty disappointing. But uh, like I said earlier, before, I, I got to go and I'm sorry, I got to take off. That's but, cool. uh, the timing of this could not have been worse. It, it, all they had to do, and it was just, it's all a matter of willingness, is make Doctor Who. That's all they had to make. But now we know why Russell's came come back. Uh, but the, after years of saying he didn't want to come back, he came back to use Doctor Who in a culture war that, uh, quite frankly, his side is losing right now. And it will be proven out. Uh, the, the specials will probably do well. It'll be proven out in the series as as we see how it does worldwide. Uh, remember, this is going to be a Doctor Who that's supposedly made for everyone. Uh, and we just saw the South Park. Yeah episode Gary, what we've got you here can i ask you one can you ask you a question you probably know the answer to that because i i don't when it comes to obviously doctor who has now got this international streaming home and you Mm -hmm. cover the culture war extensively on theodrotic.com how do we know and do they ever publish figures so we have an indication of because we don't know obviously we'll know what the british ratings are because we always know how will we know and do they ever publish figures for how well shows do on Disney Plus, either particular to a, a given territory, such as your own in North America or globally, if we any any idea we can where we can find those figures. No, nope. no, nope. uh, there's there's some that can give you an idea. Uh, we have the Nielsen's, which mm-hmm. judge by minutes watched, and then there's Samba TV, which judges through some very complex algorithm how yeah. people watch it on uh, what's called Roku, basically their TVs. So they watch it through a system like a set top box or uh, th- through their system on their television. But we yeah. it, it doesn't judge like people watching it on their phones or people watching it on their uh, desktops or laptops. So no, we have no real, w- the only way you can really judge is how, how people are talking about it. Uh, you could tell house of the dragon was a pretty popular show that that's something that like rebuilt, not completely. Yeah, we still have time, but like recovered somewhat what they had lost from a, franchise that ended in disaster uh picard season three pretty popular show but it still wasn't watched by a lot of people it just wasn't it, you know it, it it brought some people back but it wasn't so uh we'll know pretty pretty quickly like how popular doctor who is in america and it's just not it, even with david Tennant coming back it's kind of going to be a fart in the wind uh people will watch it people will talk about it but by the time shooty comes uh, i i don't Hold because out. the mar- the marketing budgets for for shows, all shows, they do uh, a pro a, a pro a pro blah, 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 blah. they do allocate a certain amount of the marketing budget depending on each territory. I would imagine. So oh, they're putting money into this. The problem is it's on Disney Plus, and Doctor Who's been kicked around. Modern Doctor Who's been kicked around a lot. It was on mm-hmm. Netflix, and it was immensely popular on yeah. Netflix. Then it went to Amazon Prime, and just kind of people forgot about it. They just did. And Amazon Prime is a pretty big streaming service. Now it's on Disney Plus, which hasn't really gained subscribers here in North America. We're counting Canada, too, in almost a couple of years now. It's, it's subscriber growth has stopped. All the other growth is international. It's basically in India, and it's a lot of fudging of numbers, mixing it with Hotstar. But it's uh, it, on Disney Plus, it's just going to get buried. You know, you think uh, the fact that it's my worst nightmare, the Doctor Who's on Disney Plus is just terrible. <laughs> A lot of our viewers do feel the I same know, way, I have to say. To die, isn't it? <laughs> I've, I I've always been pretty indifferent, pretty indifferent to it, even though I did get a bit of a shock to the system when I saw the Disney logo next to, next to TARDIS for the first time a few weeks ago. That didn't feel good. But I've always been thinking, been pretty pragmatic because Disney Plus does have things like Bluey on for the kids. You know, they never interfered with that creatively, mm-hmm. at least not I've been aware of. So I oh, thought they have. Was, they have. Oh, they have. <laughs> yeah. Not allowed to say Ooga Booga on there. No. What, that is that something they could say before? Oh, well, we could. Australia, it's made for Australia. <laughs> yeah. Australia. Australia. You can so, you know, you like, mate. You can't anymore. You like. Suppose we'll find out in a week. I could be wrong about all of this. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, we'll find out in a week. Mate, thank you for your company. It's really good of you to, to, uh, right. to come on and spend some time with us. Have a wonderful stream. Uh, yeah, and we'll we- see you all soon. 
Yeah, please come back soon. Let us know what you think of the specials. Yeah, we'll see you on the other side. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Enjoy the rest of your day, mate. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank God he's gone. (laughs) 